Hi, my name is Riley McRae and this is a concept video on Jacobians. So Jacobians give us a powerful method of analyzing the position, velocity and accelerations of four bar linkages. So we can use the principle of Jacobians and apply it to this situation here, which is taken as question 3.5 from your unit reader. So in this situation you have a uh, link like this, well, sorry, a mechanism like this, where you have an angular velocity of 1 radian per second of link 2 in regards to link 1. The angle here will be 30 degrees, and the distance between point A and point B in the x direction is going to be 3 inches. So, using this information, we can take the um, vectors from that and we can apply our Jacobians to find the velocities and accelerations at each point. So to, fir um, to start with we want to define our vectors. So we can take this one here as one large vector, call that R3. We can take the x direction as our R1 and we can take the y direction as our R2. And it doesn't really matter which direction we put these vectors in, as long as we remain consistent and define the angles properly. So each of their angles will be taken from, well, the horizontal and from the base of the vector. So our angle for R3 will be phi to 3 here, our angle for R2 will be phi to 2 here, and our angle for R1 would be 0. So we can use this situation here to calculate the positions, first of all the position attributes. So we've given our R1 already as 3 inches and because of the fact that our feet are 3 is 30 degrees we can calculate everything else with just basic right, hang, well, right angle triangle equations. So cos 30 will be R1 on R3 so it will be 3 on cos 30 which gives us 3 point 464 inches. So that'll be our R3. We can also calculate our R2 in the same way and just going straight to the answer there, that'll be 1.732 inches. So we have all the positions of these and we can calculate, well, we can see from the geometry here, V2 is going to be straight up, it's 90 degrees, and our V3 of course is given as 30 degrees. And now we also want to convert our angular velocity given here, which right in full notation is going to be the angular velocity of link 2 with respect to link 1. And because it's gone in the counterclockwise direction, <coughs> that will be positive 1 radian per second. So converting that into either, well, one of these angles here, we can see that this link is going to be um, well, it's going to remain straight, so any moment applied here is going to be the same across the bar. So we can see that it's also going to be our feet of, um, affecting our feet of free here. So essentially, we can write it like that. So now we've expressed the angular velocity applied to the situation in terms of our vector diagram here. And again, we can do the same with our acceleration given. So what we want to calculate is the velocity of point B being the slider and the acceleration of point B again being the slider. So the next thing we want to do is write our loop closure equation. So in this situation, it will be R1 plus R2. Subtract R3 will give us zero. So just basic vector sums there. And from that we can write up the Cartesian components of that equation. So in our x direction, r1 cos theta 1, r2 cos theta 2, subtract r3 cos theta 3. And of course these are all going to be equal to 0. And similarly we can do in the y direction. like so. So now we want to define our Q set which we can take Jacobians for. 
So in choosing our queue set, and we want to remain consistent with our queue set as we go, we're going to choose three variables that are, well, the three variables that are going to be changing from here. So in this situation, our R1 is going to vary as the slider moves back and forth. Our R3 is going to vary as, well, this, um, this joint here moves essentially into itself. <laughs> And our feeder free is going to change as the slider moves closer to point A. So that's one arrangement of the Q set, and we have to keep that consistent as we do our Jacobians. So now, taking the Jacobian with respect to this Q set here, we get first term with respect to R1, so that'll be our cos feeder 1. Second one with respect to R3. So minus cos theta free. And now with respect to theta free, so we'll get um, taking the derivative of a cosine, you get negatives cancelling out, so you get R free sine theta free. And doing the same thing for the bottom term, we get our sine theta one, we get our negative sine theta free, and we get our still negative now, R free cos theta free. So that'll be our Jacobian for this for this mechanism here. And first equation we can use to calculate the velocity components for this vector diagram is that our Jacobian take the dot product with the derivative of our Q set will give us zero. So I'm um, going to use a new piece of paper just to write out that Jacobian again. It was cos theta 1, sin theta 1, cos theta 3, minus sin theta 3, and positive r3 sin theta 3, and a minus r3 cos theta free. So now multiplying this by our q dot, which keeping the same order as before will be our r1 derivative, our r3 time derivative, and our theta free time derivative. So now doing the basic dot product of these, we take our top line first, r1 cos theta 1. Our second line, R free and our cos theta free. And our third line, R free angular velocity of link free and our sine theta free. And of course these are all going to be equal to zero. And now we can do the same for the bottom line. Sine theta one, subtract R free sine theta free. Now subtract R free theta free cos theta free. Oh, sorry, theta dot free there. So now we can apply the angles that are remaining constant. So in that situ in this situation, our theta one is going to be equal to zero, and our theta two will be equal to ninety degrees. Although we don't have any theta two here, so cos 0 is going to be 1, and sine theta 1 is going to be 0. So we can get rid of those terms. So now we've got our theta free dot, we've got our r free and well, theta free. So the only information we're missing is our r free dot and our r1 dot or our derivatives of vector 1 and vector 3. So, <laughs> so because we've only got one unknown in this equation here, we can just take the bottom line and then substitute it into the top line. Although, obviously, if you had two, you'd just have simultaneous equations and you could solve that with a matrix or substitution or whichever method you want to use. So thankfully, it's simplified in this situation. So we can rearrange this bottom equation here. So it'll be R3, theta free dot, 
cos of theta free divided by negative sine theta free here. And putting equation, um, putting values into that, sorry. Where did I put it? <laughs> we'll get 3.464 times a theta free dot of 1 radian per second times cos of theta free being 30 divided by negative sine 30. And that will give us minus 6 meters per second. So our free dot. Now we can substitute this into our top line of the matrix. R1 dot. So rearranging this one. Give us our free. Cos theta free. Subtract our free. Beta free dot. Sine theta free. And again, putting in our variables here. We'll get negative 6 times cos 30, 3.464 bit our R3, 1 radian per second, sine 30, and we'll get negative 6.928 meters per second. And that is our R1 dot. So we've almost finished the velocity analysis here. This is going to apply to, I'll draw it again here, is going to apply to our R1 vector here. So essentially what we've got is the relative motion of whatever this point here, which in this situation is going to be the wall, the relative motion of the wall towards our point B, which is where we took it from. So essentially what we have here is the velocity of, um, I'll call it the wall, <laughs> oh no, velocity of link 1 being the wall with respect to point 4 is 6.928 but what we wanted from the question is the velocity of point B or the velocity of link 4 with respect to the wall so we want the opposite of this which will give us 6.928 meters per second in the positive direction and if you take a look at the actual mechanism itself and, well, intuitively, if it was moving in the negative direction, you'd see that your R1 distance is decreasing, so it is moving in that direction. But for it to decrease, your slider 4 would have to move in the positive direction. So now, intuitively, you can see that these answers make some kind of sense. So the next video, we'll be looking at the acceleration analysis.